So, what have CGG Veritas been doing for wide asthma delivery? Well, we shot the first commercial wide asthma survey for BP, so we're pioneering WAS. And since then, we've been busy acquiring uh, both dedicated service and concurrent data library projects in the Gulf of Mexico, which gives us a lot of experience. And experience is what you need for these complex multi vessel operations. Uh, it involves a lot of complex navigation and coordination. The logistics are huge. You can have 900, well, something like 900 people involved in uh, these wide azimuth surveys. Hundreds, thousands of tons of fuel oil. There's a lot of logistics behind the smooth running of these operations. In addition, you need the data processing to provide onboard QC for these huge data volumes, fast time processing on board, and obviously handling the data when it comes back to the processing center. So here's some pictures from the Gulf. Um, this is our Walker Ridge wide open <coughs> toad stream configuration that we've been acquiring data library with. So we have one streamer vessel, two source vessels at the head, and a spare. And then off the picture, eight kilometers behind, we have another two source vessels. So six vessels involved in the operation, lots of logistics. The results we're getting from this kind of acquisition are these uh, fantastic uh, images that you're used to seeing. So this is a traverse through the Jack and Julie discoveries in Walker Ridge. And in a way you struggle to discern anything with an arrow azimuth. Again, the improved illumination and multiple attenuation with the uh, wide azimuth data, it's uh, streaks ahead. Here's another of our data library operations. So this is a dual streamer vessel operation. And this time we've got two source vessels in the middle of the uh, streamer vessels. And we find this to be slightly more efficient for covering larger areas. And that's what we've been using on garden banks. Quick look at some garden banks data. Well, we completed the uh, fast track processing on garden banks some time ago. And we're currently reprocessing that through uh, reverse time migration. And it's interesting to see the uplift that you get from reverse time migration on the wide azimuth data. So you have better definition of salt flanks, and also the sediment determinations against the salt. Very briefly, I mentioned circle shooting earlier on, and um, I suppose this is my here's one we prepared earlier. But so this was shot by Veritas in the 1980s, and uh, gets used to stack. It's, it's not particularly inspiring, but the interesting thing to look at is the offset azimuth distribution in a single bin. Now, potentially, with circle shooting, you can acquire full azimuth data. But as you can see, the offset <coughs> or the azimuth distribution within the bin is a little bit chaotic, and it's not particularly continuous. So if you want to do full azimuth acquisition with circle shoot, you're going to have to do quite a dense uh, pattern of circles. So suggest that circle shooting is perhaps better suited for smaller developmental targets. So just to summarize the marine wide azimuth, range of tools, those different geometries suitable for different targets, rapidly evolving, becoming more efficient, rapid growth of experience, and it's well established, so it's ripe for exporting to the rest of the world now. And I think we expect to see uh, some wide azimuth surveys going on offshore, West Africa, perhaps even in the North Sea next year. So, land. So the story with land is we've always been uh, wide azimuth to some extent. The story is going to high density. And the question is, how dense do we go? Well, with conventional acquisition, we have something like this. We have uh, source and receiver lines spaced about 300 meters, and group intervals and shot point intervals of about, of about 50 meters. But what that means is that we suffer from source and receiver array facts. And also, we're recording, we're not recording unalias noise scattered in the diffractive noise, which is problematic in a lot of the Middle East, um, is alias, which is a problem for processing. <coughs> so how dense do we go? Well, we're about to start shooting at the survey in Qatar, um, where we go really dense. I mean, denser than marine data. So we have source and receiver lines 100 meter spacing and single point receiver and single point sources on an interval of 7.5 meters. I mean, this is extremely dense acquisition. The benefits that give us, that, that 
gives us is that uh, we're recording an IV signal and noise. We have to have some kind of uh, point source solution. We're going to use point receivers, and this high density will give us some great data for processing. Uh, a lot's been said in the press uh, and uh, kind of scientific community about uh, you know, point, point receiver acquisition, but I think um, source rates are something that have been overlooked for some time. If you consider that your standard source ray is something like four vibrators, um, we've got six here. But if you take the first four, I mean, these are big, these are big vehicles, so your source ray is about 40 meters long, much larger than your receiver array. So you're going to suffer from exactly the same problems as your receiver array. You're going to have intra-array statics. You're going to have effects which cause uh, signal attenuation and azimuthal effects. So the only way forward is to go to some kind of single vibrator acquisition, which is what we've developed with uh, V1. So the idea now is that instead of having four fleets of four vibrators on your crew, you now have 16 fleets of one vibrator. Uh, using a single vibrator gives you point source characteristics. Uh, it gives us a, a high resolution data set for processing and imaging. And it's more efficient using a single vibrator. So typically we find that for the same production rate, we can record two to four times the shot density. So what we actually do with V1 is we extend the slip sweep technique to maximize the crew performance. So we use very small slip times and very long sweeps. Uh, so we have a lot of vibrator sweeping concurrently. An example of some V1 data, here's a time slice. So this is a time slice at two different depths, uh, shallow on the left, deeper on the right, and that's from the conventional vibrator size acquisition. Uh, 25 meter shot spacing on 300 meter lines. Even if we just half the line interval and go to 150 meter shot lines, we see that there's a really big uh, reduction in the acquisition footprint, and everything looks a lot more looks a lot more coherent. And considering that we're using single vibrators instead of uh, arrays of four vibrators, this is despite the fact that we reduce the source energy. So just to summarise, um, high density wide azimuth land. So going to point source to point receiver removes the intra-array statics. It improves the wave field sampling. And it gives us a nice high density data set which allows us to do some good processing, improve noise attenuation, particularly things like ground roll. And we can do high resolution processing, uh, very high resolution uh, noise attenuation using uh, FK filters and things like that. High resolution statics and velocities. And we, can do, we can apply our new 3D wide azimuth algorithms to it. And also we have the benefit of boosting crew performance at the same time. So it looks like a win-win.